to the channel Grand Columbia. Been with you for over five years now and now living in Armenia, Colombia. And this is my attempt at another weekly update. Do we have any uh, weekly update music here? Okay, first of all, computer system humming along, pretty flawless. A yeah, little glitch. Apparently the battery's dead, so I got to get a new battery. The clock keeps stopping and I have to reset it 50 times a day. But that's nothing. Everything's been working great. You got to love it. I'm so thankful for that. There were a total of seven visitors this past week. Uh, some carried over from the week before. So it was a pretty busy week. One was quite interesting. He's actually been living in Manizales for almost a year. And he came to visit Manizales, and that's when COVID hit. And so he ended up getting trapped. Uh, prior to that, he'd been living in Nicaragua. So now that he's been here for a while, he actually wants to move here. And he's trying to figure out maybe Armenia, maybe Manizales. He's not sure, but not Nicaragua. Uh, so that was you know, an interesting character, a professional boxer, uh, now into you know retirement mode. You know, kind of a trip. Good guy to meet and talk to. Uh, very interesting. I keep getting asked what's going on with Natalie. We haven't seen Natalie. I mean, is she okay? What's what's happening? And uh, she's just been very busy. She's been operating as a guide uh, because you know to meet with me one day maybe two days to basically pump my brain for all the things that you need to know about getting here um, as a as a gringo and assimilating into the culture you know so that's well worth the time but i'm expensive to just go take you to salento for example and so i find local people that will do that pretty reasonable and natalie uh, until she goes back to bogota she agreed that she would do it, and what a good, trustworthy person to do it. Well, <laughs> she's been busy non-stop. Now, one couple, very nice couple, and uh, you know, I, I don't get into too much personal information for me or anybody else, but Natalie has two young children, and um, you know, six and ten, I believe. And this couple offered to take them to Parque del Cafe, which is pretty awesome. Take them to this uh, big amusement park. And so that was that was very nice. It was very kind of them. And uh, according to Natalie, they just had an absolute blast. Of course, Natalie's kind of worn out. She's been on the go day after day after day through the weekends. And um, <laughs> I think she's ready for a good night's sleep. She's also been helping uh, with one of the people here decided to just not even return home. So he's been setting up housekeeping. So he got an apartment. She helped with that, negotiating, you know, to get to get the apartment, uh, to get Internet turned on, various things like that. And, you know, what was in the contract? Busy girl. Last Saturday, I was invited to go to the uh, country club of Armenia. It was very interesting, and I'll be doing a video on that. I'm actually about halfway through with it. And once I get it edited and with some voiceover, I'll put that up, where I basically spent the day at the country club, walking around the golf course and looking at the facilities. The facilities are pretty awesome. The gorgeous clay tennis courts and everything for the family there, swimming pools, all, all kinds of stuff. But the treat was we went in and uh, they invited us to stay for lunch. Now, this is an exclusive club, but they were being very nice with us. So we sit down to have lunch. I wasn't really hungry. I usually don't get hungry till the middle of the afternoon. I saw something on the menu and it was uh, shrimp bisque. Now, I love me a good bisque. And it's actually a hard thing to find a good one. In most places, don't take the time they should. And that's, that's everywhere. In the U.S., I found that. But when you get a good one, it's it's awesome. So I ordered that. And the waiter is like, well, that's all you want? Because it's just a, basically, it's an appetizer. I said, yeah, that's funny. I'm, I was actually hoping 
it would have a good flavor and it wouldn't be that much and everything would be great. So that's what I got. And it was awesome. It was really, really good. And I'd hope so. I didn't think I'd be disappointed because I know from researching some months ago that this country club has a bona fide chef, an actual chef that works there. And um, my fingers were crossed. The only thing that threw me a little bit is it was loaded with shrimp. Now, shrimp bisque usually doesn't have any actual shrimp in it. Or it might have one or two on the top as garnish. That's typically the way you get it. This was like, man, I don't know. There was like 25 shrimp in there. Not these little tiny ones, but like regular shrimp. So um, that threw me, but the flavor was awesome enough to just take a few minutes to put it in this video and then monday went to check out the bolo club now if you remember when i did a video on sports i had the bolo club the country club in there but this was during a lot of the lockdown i couldn't actually go see them so i operated off of internet information well now i actually had the chance to go and see these things and bolo club is pretty awesome nice pool up on the roof of the building, nice bowling alley, all kinds of uh, facilities there, gymnasium and lots of tennis courts, and it's a uh, pretty cool place. Also with a restaurant that's pretty well known for being excellent. And then one night, decided to go with one of the clients to the uh, Mexican restaurant not far from me. Now, this guy is half Mexican, Mexican mom, from the United States, from California, but he's definitely a Mexican heritage. His grandma is Mexican, you know. So, you know, the question was, is he going to, you know, what's he going to think of this Mexican food? Because Colombian, Mexican, I mean, think of it like uh, Chinese in America. It's, it's American Chinese. It's not exactly Chinese. Uh, it's... In most cases, it's not even close to real Chinese, but, you know, it doesn't mean it's not good. And so Mexican here is more of a Colombian Mexican. So didn't know, didn't matter, you know, so let's go check it out. So we go down to Container City, order up some Mexican. He gets this big old burrito. He loved it, polished it off, enjoyed it. I got uh, tacos. I had one, was kind of full, took the rest home for later that night. And Natalie was with us. So, you know, I was hoping to get a chance to catch up with her, how things have been going that week. And we, and we did a little bit. But here's the thing. I wanted a cold beer. I, I don't drink a lot of beer, but I love a cold beer. And that was my first criteria, cold. And then, um, now, Container City is a little upscale. And so they've got, you know, a lot of international brands of various things. Uh, the food, and you know, you get uh, Arabian food, you can get sushi, you get the Mexican, all kinds of different things. There's a steakhouse, there's even a wing shop, and it's all in these shipping containers. I want a beer. Well, there's no draft beer, because as we all know, draft beer attracts COVID. So you have to get the bottled beer. COVID doesn't like bottled beer. So... Just on a whim, I, you have any wheat beer? And the guy says, uh, no, no wheat beer. Oh, damn. I, I like wheat beer, and I haven't had it in ages. So I said, okay, well, what do we have? So he gets rummaging around, and he pulls out a wheat beer. And it's uh, from Germany, and it's uh, Poliner, Poliner. I don't know how to pronounce it. You've probably seen it before. It's a pretty big-sized bottle. It's... Uh, I'd say 16 ounce bottle. And so he says, well, how about this? He said, okay, it's great. You know, I felt it, it was ice cold. Perfect, okay. So I go sit down. Just a little backstory. If I walk up to a tienda and I get a 12 ounce can of Club Columbia, for example, uh, or Aguila, something like that, it's probably gonna cost me 2,500 pesos, 2,500 pesos. 70 cents, 60 some cents, 
If I were to go into a restaurant and get one of those kinds of beers, it might go up to about 8,000 pesos. Probably more like five or six, but could be 8,000 pesos. So I'm thinking, all right, this is a German beer. It's an import. It'd probably run me 12, 14,000, but wasn't a lot of choices. And I'm just getting one anyway. So yeah, let's go for it. I find out <laughs> it was so good. I was actually contemplating getting a second one. I found out that it was 24,000 pesos. Oh my God, it was like, what, $7, $8 for this bottle of beer? I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And so the price, um, yeah, but you know, it's like I've become a real cheapskate, you know, when you struggle for a while, you kind of do that. It was it was a bit of a shock, but I you know it's I think about it and it's like it was not a line considering what it was where it was all of that, uh, and it wasn't even a twelve ounce it was a sixteen ounce. There's nothing to complain about, and it was delicious and it really hit the spot. I guess the only thing I was complaining about in my own mind is not even so much the price in and of itself, but more like. Oh, crap, I can't afford a second one, and I really would have loved a second one. <laughs> what else went on this week? I uh, finished my th classes theory uh, for driving. Actually, the last one is today at noon, and then I'm done. And then this next week, I go out on some practical drives. Don't know how many. I'm guessing that I'll probably go out and show them that I can drive after a couple and and they'll sign off on that then i have to get the medical which is included in the price so i'll have to go get a medical exam and i understand it's it's pretty involved it's more than just your hearing and your sight uh, so that's fine i've been pretty healthy uh, so i'm not worried about that i probably could use a new prescription for the glasses but i think i'm all right i mean i can I can see what's going on. What else do I have? And I think there's a test. I'm not sure. I'm a little unclear on that. So there may be a test that they'll hold my hand through. If everything goes well, the end of this next week, I'm hoping I'll be finished with all the things that I need. And then I'll just have to wait a couple weeks for that to process to get my license. It may go beyond that. I also have an interesting story about signing up for the EPS insurance, but I think I'm going to save that for its own video. I think it deserves its own video. A shocking bit of information while I was pursuing that, found out that according to Columbia's computer, I'm a dead Colombian who lived in Cartagena and I've been dead for about six years. <laughs> but I'm alive. So I'll tell that story on, on another day. So that's about it for the week. Uh, actually, there's a million other things that went on, but uh, I don't want this to go on forever. So that's my update for the week. I will see you tomorrow at the coffee time. Don't be late. Be there. 11 a.m. Colombian time. Bring your questions, whatever questions you have. So that's it. See you later. Ciao.